Welcome back to Contextual Electronics. This is Chris Gamble, and today we're going to be going over the intro an introduction to schematics. And to do so, we're actually going to pull up one of my older projects that's uh, still in process, actually, but uh, it, just to have a baseline because we're going to be building up new products for the actual Contextual Electronics sessions. But that's actually going to be taken care of in Contextual Electronics in session one or whatever session you might be happen to be watching. So. In this case, we want to just have a generic project we can talk about without actually building it all the way up from scratch. Some of the other examples we were showing earlier, we actually showed you know, how to build a, uh, a schematic symbol from scratch. In this case, we'll actually, and, and the same for schematics, we're actually going to uh, start with one that's existing already. So let's open up the launcher. Oops. There we go. So let's open up the launcher, and you can see that uh, this is called Radio Board Project. Uh, so this is a different one than we were using previously, and I just did that by going open, open a new project. So we're going to open up the E schema. We see that this actually is pro uh, populated now versus before. And as a quick rundown, this is just a power section. These are some relays. This is a at mega eight, ATX mega rather part. Um, this is a small class D audio amplifier and then this is a uh, audio codec to actually output mp3s to an audio f audio format the actual analog format so that's kind of what we're going on with here so we've actually looked at this in the introduction or the walk through the schematic program or EE schema we were looking at some of this stuff but I thought it was worthwhile to actually show showcase some of the actual connections because this is slightly when you know when you actually start getting uh, symbols in here, it's a it's a different ball game. So we can see here, um, you know, a, a variety of components. Um, this has a lot of the footprints actually got back annotated from the association tool, which we'll talk about in future videos using the same project. Um, but we can see there's resistors here. This is a SD card connector, more resistors, LEDs. Um, but other things that might be less familiar, uh, this is a symbol for ground. Uh, you may you may have seen this in other schematics before, but this is a, a localized ground. And then up here it represents a power rail, which we generate elsewhere. So if we look at where this actually generated, we see this is actually the section with the th element 317, pretty common power component. Um, you know, using a ground here, this is actually creating the ground, and then uh, the 3 3 rail, and that's coming from a 5 volt unregulated input here. And then uh, the actual circuit was using a uh, transformer, a 120 to 5 volt transformer. What else is here? Uh, so, other things on this schematic uh, this is a global, global net, which is uh, on the right side here, uh, this one. This is a global label, rather. So if you have different pages, which we'll go over in another video about hierarchy and pages, if you have different pages, though, this is a this is a common symbol that you can have across the entire project. So anytime you drop a symbol that says chassis ground, it'll all hook up to the same net once you actually um, start going into layout. So same thing here. We I, I use pretty I use global labels for a lot of things just because it's uh, simple and as long as your project isn't too big, it's okay to actually utilize um, global labels because then you won't be uh, replicating anything. So if you had well, we'll go over that in the hierarchy, hierarchy stuff. But basically, there's no way to really confuse this um, with multiple inst instantiations of it. So going through other things, I mean, we see this is schematic symbols as well. Um, this is a relay symbol, um, NPN transistor. Um, all of these hookups here, you can see as we zoom in, um, with each connection between the pins, we went over pins in a, in a different KiCad video, but um, we actually make connections here, the wires we, we hook between uh, different components and such. Right here, this little dot, it indicates an actual connection and that's because you want to actually know when two wires intersect if they're actually connected if I started a new wire right now and I drew it across here this created a, a, a stub of a wire but it actually you can see right here it did not connect 
If I wanted to connect, I can just mouse over and hit J, and that'll create that junction. But otherwise, um, it will not it will not connect by default unless unless you actually try and specifically wire to a another wire. Uh, so we've talked about we've talked about the outline, the page outline from this before, and uh, other other parts of the component or of the schematic rather. We can see that there is grids. We've talked about the importance of grids in a separate video, and then the text box down here. This actually shows the file name, the sheet number. There's only one sheet right now. The size of the sheet, which is a B size, and then just some of the other uh, information, such as the build of the, the program and the date it was modified. So this is this is a very simple schematic, single page schematic. We'll go over more about multi-page schematics in the hierarchy and pages video, which is upcoming in the EE schema section of the KiCad tutorial. But until now, until then, uh, this is just a quick look at an actual schematic, some of the hookups, some of the different components, and what you can expect when you start creating your own schematics in KiCad.